This is how it came about. The surface of the world is always changing. Very hot radioactive matter sink. During the 75 million years that coal was forming, the whole area where the British Isles are now was slowly sinking, and it was this that caused the coal to form. Here is a distant view of the swamp and its plants. If we cut into the earth, we can see a layer of peat being formed on a layer of sand and mud. All the layers are sinking, but so slowly that the dead leaves and branches from the forest are always enough to keep the top of the peat bed at just about sea level, so that the plants can keep on growing. As the layers sank, the peat beds grew thicker and thicker. At last, the movements inside the earth caused the surface to sink a little faster. When this happened, it meant that the forest could no longer keep itself above water, and all the plants and trees were drowned. As the swampy area sank, the dry ground all around rose. This meant that the rivers and streams that ran down into the swamp flowed faster and brought down huge quantities of sand and mud. When they came to the water where the swamp had been, they flowed more slowly. The sand and mud dropped to the bottom where it settled on top of the drowned forest and the peat beds. It pressed them down and squeezed out all the moisture and gases. This turned the peat into coal. Then the sinking of the Earth's surface became slower again, and the sand and mud began to fill up the flooded area. Deltas formed at the river mouths. For hundreds and hundreds of years, they spread outwards. Eventually, they linked up over the whole area, which again began to turn into a swamp. The sort of plants that had grown in the coal forests were still alive along the edge of the place where the first swamp had been. When the water grew shallow and sandbanks appeared, there was something for them to grow on. After a time, the whole area was again covered with a huge tropical forest. And so the forming of coal had started all over again. The plants grew thickly and luxuriantly and dropped their dead leaves and seeds and spores into the shallow, marshy water for thousands of years and made a new peat bed. And while this was going on, the peat bed of the first forest sank lower and lower and was squeezed and changed into coal. It took about a yard of peat to make an inch of coal. This went on for 75 million years in a regular pattern. Many forests grew and were drowned and many seams of coal were formed. Then the movements inside the earth changed, and mountains grew up just to the south of the coal swamp. They lifted the swamp clear of the water and turned it into a desert. This was the end of the coal-forming age. The earth movements went on, and the flat land where the coal seams lay was pushed into hills and valleys. For example, a ridge like this appeared where the Pennines are now. It was much higher than any mountains in Britain today, but even as it grew, the weather wore away the tops of the hills. These earth movements pushed the sandwich of coal seams and rock strata out of shape. What are known as folds and faults occur. Often the faults took on quite definite patterns as the earth's surface was moved one way or another. On many cliff sides, you can see the sort of folds and faults that were made in the coal seams. Then, as the years passed, these movements also stopped. 
and the hills were worn away by wind and rain and ice until once more they became a gently rolling desert plain. But the earth was changed many more times in later centuries. At last the shape that we know today began to appear and the British coal fields took their present form. A cross section through one part of England shows how much the coal seams have been changed by the earth movements. This is how they look in Lancashire where they slope steeply and come to the surface. The scale is exaggerated. The true scale is shown above. We cross the Pennines, which were once much higher and contain coal seams that have long since been weathered away. On the other side are the East Midlands coal fields, also coming up to the surface at the foot of the hills and then sloping away deeper and deeper until they are too far down to mine. Here is a model of a mine. Two shafts are sunk, so that there are two ways of getting in and out. Usually one is used for winding coal and the other is for men to travel in. Two shafts are also needed for ventilation. Here you can see how, when the mine is more fully developed, the air goes down one shaft, round all the workings and up the other shaft. An area of coal known as the shaft pillar is left round the base of the shaft. This is to hold up the surface buildings and to prevent the pit bottom layout from being crushed. Sometimes other pillars of coal are left, as you see here, to support a small town or reservoir. The only mining that takes place in the shaft pillar is the building of roads to carry the traffic to and from the coal faces. Here are some miners building roads in a coal mine. As soon as the roads have been driven through the shaft pillar, the winning of coal starts. This shows coal being won by a method known as board and pillar. This is only done in fairly shallow mines. Roads or boards are driven through the coal so as to leave pillars in between. These pillars act as a support to the earth above. For example, here is a small town whose buildings may be damaged if the ground sinks. Down below, the board and pillar method is used to prevent such damage. But under the countryside around, where it does not matter if the ground sinks a bit, all the coal is extracted by long wall mining. In long wall mining, a coal face perhaps 200 yards long is started beside the main roadway and is pushed forward into the solid coal, forming a panel roadways run down each side of the panel and sometimes down the middle. And along one of them runs the conveyor belt that carries the coal away. They also bring air to the coal face. 